A survey by the African Polling Institute, API, has revealed that the trust of Nigerians in the regime of President Mohamed Buhari is 26 percent. The survey also showed that citizens have more trust in religious leaders, which is about 55 percent, and traditional leaders, which have about 44 percent, compared to the Buhari government, which has got just 26 percent. They also have 26% trust in the judicial system. The National Assembly, they have 22% trust. And in the Nigerian police, they also have 22% trust. Now, this reveals that citizens distrust the state and fellow citizens, as well as an inclination for ethnicity over nationalism. A total of 8,104 contacts were contacted, out of which 5,363 interviews were completed representing a response rate of 66.09%. Well, joining us to analyze this uh, is Francis Chilaka. He's a political analyst, and Adimola Unilola is a broadcast journalist. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Unilola, because as a journalist, you interact with people every day. You feel the pulse of people, get to find out what they think about the government of the day, uh, their reactions to security operatives. And, and this report has clearly stated percentage-wise where Nigerians stand in terms of their trust for leadership and, of course, uh, other issues like, you know, security. But why do you think that the, the trust level has dropped so much? Is it really about the government of the day or is it about the Nigerian state in itself? Well, um, to a very large extent, I'd say both. Um, if you go for elections campaigning and you make certain promises to the people and four years down the line or six years down the line, they find that certain expectations are not met, quite naturally, the issue of trust would um, come up or the lack of it. Um, what you're witnessing today um, it's just a reflection of a certain level of um, um, despondency because certain expectations have not been met. And that happens globally anyway. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. I mean, in other climes as well, when politicians go out and make promises, if those promises are not delivered, um, suddenly uh, there would be issue of lack of trust. Interesting. Uh, Francis, we, we know what we're going through right now in the country. There's insecurity on one hand, there are ethnic tensions on the other, the political tensions. Uh, and of course, there's 2023 in the radar. Everybody is aligning. We're seeing crisscrossing and um, even the party leaderships are also having their fair share. And it seems like uh, Nigeria is being dragged in many directions. But is there a sudden level of clarity and leadership in the midst of all of these, uh, you know, um, problems that Nigeria is facing. Can you say as a Nigerian and as someone who analyzes the politics in this country that there is clarity of leadership and there is some form of respite for the people? Um, for the people, yes, respite, like um, the survey has said, the people are um, taking flight with religious leaders and um, traditional leaders. That is where they find the respite. But when it comes to the issue of governance today, uh, the people are not even sure if they really have a government in place. Because um, what, is, what we're seeing playing out today uh, does not speak like a country that, um, that the leaders seem to know what they're doing. You know, because we, 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 Nigeria used to be a country where people wake up every morning, they're so happy, you greet your neighbor and all of that. But no, everybody's so hostile. Everybody's scared of the other person. So there's a lot of, you know, fear, there's insecurity, there's kidnapping, there's herders and farmers crisis. So all of this is making it look as if truly, truly, we don't know if there's government in place. Well, let's look at the fact that we know that as Nigerians, we're very traditional people. We believe in our religious leaders. But then we also have a certain level of need and hope that we expect um, some things to be done by our, our leaders. For example, 
uh, my first segment, we were talking about Mr. President um, and, um, you know, the reaction to the insecurity that we're facing in the country. And several people have spoken and, and everybody points to the fact of, uh, to the fact that we have, that there's no political will of sorts to deal with the issue of insecurity. Instead, there is some form of politicization of the issue. And so I ask, if we're looking towards 2023, which is about two years from now, and we see a lot of infighting in the political parties because of interest and all of that, but then the bigger cloud that's hanging over us is banditry is unknown gunmen, is Boko Haram with their renewed um, you know, um, fight against the Nigerian state. We also have non-state actors who have also cropped up as a result of the insecurity that we're facing in the land. So Mr. Yunala, I'll ask you um, why, because you obviously are an elder uh, and you obviously have been in this country longer than I have, why do you think that there is such lack of will, political will, to deal with this issue of insecurity. Let me just remind you, just yesterday we saw videos of dead bodies being deposited at a government house in Plateau State. Uh, a few days ago, it was the NDA. I mean, the, case, the cases are numerous, and every single day we're hearing of numbers. These numbers have just become numbers to us these days. Of people that have been killed, people that have been abducted, why do you think there's such lack of political will, if there be any? I'm not sure whether uh, <laughs> what you actually uh, want to say is that um, lack of political will. Government says it is battling banditry. It says it is battling um, insecurity. But certainly uh, what we have is not persuasive enough. It is possible to conclude in certain quarters that it is lack of political will. It is also possible to look at it from point of view of inadequate um, equipment uh, in terms of uh, capability of the armed forces. Don't forget that we only just take delivery of um, um, some uh, uh, super Tucano aircraft that are designed specifically specifically for combating uh, uh, military uh, problems, I mean, insecurity and uh, insurgency, the type that we have in Nigeria. On the one hand, it could be lack of... Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Yulala, we're having problems with your connection, so I'm going to ask the question again. Can you hear me? All right, I can hear you very well. So you said that you're, you're insinuating that it could be a lot of things. It could be a number of things. Well, I'd like to let you know. All through this week, I've been speaking with retired military men, retired security ser secret service officials, and they all seem to be saying the same thing. The men are overstretched. There are not enough people to fight this war. There are no recruitment happening. The welfare of the, these officers and men have not been prioritized. Equipment, yes, but then... They're also saying there is no synergy and there is no clarity coming from the top. Mr. President is the commander in chief of the armed forces and whatever he says is law. In terms of if he says go, then everybody would go. But they're all saying the same thing. And I, I, don't, I do not know if all of these men can be wrong at the same time. Well, I did admit that it's certainly not, I mean, due to a number of factors. I mean, Lack of political will is just one of the things you mentioned. I said, yes, it could be there. See, it's all about perception. They are outsiders. Those inside say they are battling it. Now, I was saying that when you also look at the state of the armed forces, they do not quite have the kind of ammunition and aircraft you need to battle insurgency. So they're just taking delivery of the super to candle aircraft. When they have deployed those ones, let us see whether there would be some degree of improvement in the effort, you know, to contain insurgency and battle them. That's all I'm saying. Yes, political will may be lacking on the one hand. On the other hand, maybe the, 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 the number of people you need to battle it, they don't have the numbers because internal security is also being um, um, attended to across Nigeria. 
the last time I heard uh, the armed forces have deployed to about um, 20, 26 or 27 states. So if you have men of the armed forces performing internal security duties in 26, 27 states, it then means that you have significantly depleted the number of people you can deploy to fight insurgency. So that's another aspect of it. Ooh, and I think we have another connection issue. But quickly, because we're running out of time, let me go to Francis. Francis, um, I, told, I, I agree with what Mr. Nyalala is saying, but political will is the first thing that you need. I mean, if you do not have political will, how do we recruit these men? How do we take care of their welfare? How do we even get to talk with the American government, uh, the Senate, which has put a stop to some of the equipments that we still need to fight this war? And really... As Nigerians, where do we even come in to put pressure on our leadership to get the job done? In closing, Francis, well, I go think ahead. That, um, each time we, 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 we try to shift the blame, uh, we, we try to create a, a scenario that uh, makes our leaders unaccountable. I get worried. Um, everybody keeps saying, um, Yes, political, we, we all know that it's not there. And then we talk about lack of equipment. And, you know, it, that is really, really funny and laughable. The person is, this whole, this so-called bandits or terrorists or Boko Haram, where are they getting their weapons from? How are their weapons entering into the country? This is, I mean, this is a country where bandits have shot down and, um, uh, a fighter jet. And people are not asking questions. How did they get such uh, a level of equipment? So the point is that there is corruption in the system. And the whole thing that is happening in Nigeria is centered around corruption. Our leaders from head to toe are all corrupt. And they are the ones that are responsible. People need to become selfless. That is what leadership is all about. But Nigerian leaders are not selfless. They are not patriotic. Right now, we do not have patriotic leaders in the Nigerian leadership cycle. We do not. If we do have patriotic leaders, we can't wake up every day. All we see on the front pages of newspapers is this number of persons have been kidnapped, this number of persons have been killed, and all of that. So the thing is that the intelligence gathering system of our security architecture is totally weak. That is where the National Security Advisor should wake up and do a lot of homework. Something is wrong with the security architecture that they're not getting right. All the security experts should sit down and find out how come when, when the bandits or Boko Haram strike in the school and they cut away with 300 children, how do they move these 300 children? Where do they move them to? These are questions that we should be asking. And how come that in the process of moving this number of children, nobody responds immediately? So we have a problem with response time. So there is need for Mr. President to sit down and take a second look okay. and let them think as if there is no box when it comes to the issue of security in this country. Well, I, I mean, thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. I would really want to continue, but we are out of time. Ademola Yinola is a broadcast journalist and Francis Chilaka is a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for your thoughts. Thank you. All right. Well, we will take a short break and take you to see the highlights of the episodes we had this week. And we want to give you a rundown. Right after that, I'll give you my take. Well, President Biden, for at least a decade, has been against the continued operations going on in Afghanistan. So for at least the last 10 years, he has been pretty consistent, like you mentioned. But here in the U.S., just to give everybody a feel of the strong criticism that the president is facing from both parties, from Republicans and Democrats, it's not so much that Afghanistan fell to the Taliban. It's the fact that we have a 10 to 15,000 U.S. citizens stuck in Afghanistan right now. And in addition to that, anywhere from 80 to over 100,000 Afghan translators, contractors, and people that we promised to get out and into safety after we evacuated. So it's not so much that the country fell to the Taliban, which is a point of criticism, but it's the fact that President Biden had seven months to get these people out of Afghanistan and into safety, and he was not able to do so.
the fact that it's it's been shrouded in so much secrecy doesn't it call to question how government is going about it and the army? Um, you say if it's a quick fix, I, I I think yes, it's a quick, a terrible fix, you know, um, and it's going to be detrimental to the survival of Nigeria. Uh, first of all, we need to understand that uh, ideological driven war, driven war, uh, is different from other um, um, driven war. Just like uh, what transpired in the Niger Delta and some other part of the world, this ideological driven war uh, is a war that perhaps could take till eternity. Uh, you can't tell somebody, for example, I'm a Christian. Uh, there is nothing you're going to tell me about Jesus Christ today, or, or the opposite side of Jesus that I will believe, because that is my faith. I understand, and most of these guys, they have been brainwashed uh, in the sense that uh, they believe that um, when they take out an infidel, uh, they have a place in heaven, uh, you know, uh, kept for them. And that is why, like the last speaker already said, uh, we need to start looking into religious brutality, uh, because sometimes we always believe that in our climb here, we're suffering from police brutality. Police brutality is the least problem we have here in Nigeria. What if the president has seen that this is the only solution? to the issue that we're facing today. And he might at some point or to some extent douse tension. And that's why he's very insistent on this. Why don't we give him that benefit of a doubt? We cannot uh, because I can remember there was a time he wanted to be president in 2011. And such a question was um, uh, given to the contestants that came on a television program. And I have the tape, I have the video with me. And in 2011, he was still talking. He was talking about the grazing route. The grazing route is no solution. Let us face it. What we need is what others do, and they have been successful. Why would we want to regress thousands of years into the kind of situation in which we read about in the holy books and believe that is the solution to a 21st century problem? And then, of course, um, some people see it as even when Nigerians make suggestions, some people see it as um, uh, an attack, an attack on the government. I, I don't think so. And then, at the same time, we are asking people, the citizens, to put their hands on deck to, you know, fight this because you cannot fight this war all by the military themselves or the security agencies. You need the community, you need the civilian population, you need everybody, you know, to be given uh, support one way or the other, through either information or through uh, some kind of uh, physical support, uh, logistical support and stuff like that. And so for the, the federal government to now come and say they will, they will come and acquire land in Benue State to give it to these headers who have been killing our people, who have made our people to be in IDP camps for the past six or seven years, which is a private business. I think that is totally unacceptable and we are not going to accept that. The entire people of Benue State are not going to accept that. We are going to resist that move and the only way we can do is by going to court to seek redress against the injustice that the federal government wants to come and establish uh, these results in Benue State. The, the headers that we used to know uh, will come with their cattle and then the, the highest thing they will carry or they will be carrying will be their sticks uh, to control the cattle. But now, the headsmen that you are seeing, you are seeing them with AK-47. And sometimes you don't even see them with livestock, you don't even see them with cattle. And so the agenda now is different from what uh, was obtainable uh, long before now. Now they are coming with an agenda. They are coming to take over this land. They are coming to kill our people so that they can now uh, take over their land and settle here. And we are saying that no. The, 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 the headers that we used to know... Conclusion? Have you had a conversation? They, 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 they Have you had a conversation with any of these people for them to tell you, because I'm trying to understand where you got this conclusion from, that they want to take over your land, kill your people and take over your land? How is that even possible? Well, well, what is happening here in Benway State, most of the places that they have sacked these communities from their ancestral homes, if you go there now, they have destroyed their graves, they have cut down their economic trees, they have destroyed their houses, and they are settled on, on those lands now, as I talk to you. Contestation of power is a normal thing that happens. It happened in the APC, don't forget, before they do election. And so, it depends on how you manage yours. If you manage yours wrongly, you face the consequences. You manage yours rightly, you take the victory and give God all the glory. Don't worry yourself, my sister. 
On Friday, the neck of the Republican Democratic Party will meet, and the decision that will gladden your heart as a Nigerian. I know even you, you are praying that the good days of the Republican Democratic Party will return when we will have the dividends of democracy that you appreciate. And even as you're there, you're not comfortable because you're not sure if bandits will not invade your studio, if bandits will invade NDA, the seat of where all our military minds are being groomed and kidnap cadets and even the military will pay ransom. You know, it's shocking. I'm saying that there are those who say that the people who oppose governments this vehemently are those who yes. obviously are in opposition or are people who want something and if the government were to give you what you want you probably would lose your voice do you agree with that they, they may be correct because of course that is also part of the nigerian character they may be correct but in most cases i will tell you this when there are two categories of people that come on here let me tell you this my dear you're like a daughter to me I'm, i want you to listen attentively there are two categories of people who come on here to talk there are those who come to talk as politicians, and maybe the poor within the realm of politicians. All they say is to see how they are able to manage things to go in their own way and make sure they project themselves in the next elections and so on. The second category are people who are nationalists. People by virtue of their background of training and so on have grown up to love the country. Our leaders need to stop the bickering, the cat fighting, the bulk passing, the, oh, you're doing it because you are from this place or that place. We already are divided along these lines of ethnicity and religion. Can we for once just come together and look for a possible lasting solution to this insecurity in our country? We keep talking about what's happening in Afghanistan and how we might become Afghanistan, but we can start today. To, re to make sure that that does not happen. We can build the Nigeria that we want today. We cannot do it without leaders who are together, who have a synergy and a purpose to fix Nigeria. Let it not be about yourself, Mr. President. Let it not be about you, Mr. Governor or Senator. Let it be about the Nigerian people. Keep us safe. We need you to work for us in our interests because this is why we gave you that job. I am Mary Anna Cohn, thanking you for watching.